How's it going, boys? My name is Schlatt, and welcome back to the Weekly Slap on a brand new microphone. Wow, don't I sound great? My goodness. My new one, or I guess my better one, is not working properly right now. So I figured, hey, why not bust out the old COD commentary microphone and turn back the clock even more. So we're going to try it this time. Let me know what you think. I think it's honestly more nostalgic than usual, uh, and I kind of like it. But hey, you know, we're going to try it. And also, I'm going to try a little more stream of consciousness today. I usually write down some ideas, and I usually um, cut out the fat, so to speak, in these videos and these commentaries. But um, I'm on a new kick. I want to try to use my side projects in a way that make them more fulfilling for me and make them something that I actually want to do more. Because I'm sure you guys know I have a very strange relationship with the weekly slap in that I called it the weekly slap and I think I've uploaded all but five times in the past two years so uh, I'm gonna try and work on that and part of that includes um, coming up with ways that are that make the side projects a little more enjoyable and for me this is one of them could go back on it could uh, could try a, again a more shorter form version uh, that is more cut up but we're gonna try this I love talking, if you couldn't tell. I just <laughs> I want as many of my words to be heard as possible, and I will not stop until they are heard. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about this notion of going back in time. Uh, we're turning back the dial on the microphone. We are using an old, crappy microphone. Let me tell you about a time that some of you might not even remember. 2013. <laughs> Honestly, if you don't remember 2013, I'm kind of terrified that you're here and uh, conscious and, and listening to this, but it's a reality that I have to accept. So 2013, end of 2013, I think September was the time that the world changed. Grand Theft Auto V came out, and that is a fucking decade ago at this point, man. It has been a decade since Grand Theft Auto V has come out, which is equally as terrifying. And there was this thing... <laughs> Fucking A, what a death right there. Jesus Christ. There was this thing that some of you might re might remember when uh, GTA Online came out, which came out after the campaign for whatever reason. They didn't release them at the same time. There were a lot of hackers. There was a pretty rough start. And whenever you got into a lobby, there was a chance that your account would just get billions and billions of dollars added to it. There's a bunch of hackers running around. They join every now and then. And you just get a little cash injection. It's like a little free shark card, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I was thrilled when that happened because I loved just the... I, I don't know. I loved hackers in general. I, I had hacked uh, Mario Kart Wii previously. And, uh, you know, I was I was very much in the business of using the hacks to, like, make the game experience a little better. And in my opinion, getting a billion dollars added to my GTA Online account so I didn't have to fucking grind for, uh, you know, 30 hours on the same mission just to make a couple bucks. Honestly, a preferable alternative, right? So, you'd get the money, and Rockstar would know when it happened, and they'd kind of turn back the clock a little bit, and they kind of remove the money, but if you spent it in that time, all the items you had would still stay. And so whenever it happened, I'd get all the nicest new cars. I'd get the fucking Zentorno. I'd get the Bugatti, whatever whatever they're called. You know, I don't, I don't even remember. And I'd buy all the, the nice fucking apartments and shit. And then a couple weeks would go by, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, fuck, I love, I love all my new cars and shit. And slowly but surely, that interest would start to fade. It would. I would drive to my heart's content, and then I'd realize, hey, you know what? This isn't all it's cracked up to be. I kind of took on more than I can chew. My my garage used to have two cars in it, my daily driver and my nice one that I'd work on, and now it's got 12, and I'm in the new apartment, and it's kind of, you know, a bit of a <laughs> bit too too quick of a lifestyle creep for me, you know? And I'd wind up selling all of them. I, I'd sell all of the nice supercars that I bought, and I would go back to my trusty Karen Futo. And if you don't know what the Karen Fudo is, I feel bad for you because that is the best car in GTA 5. It's a little cheap shit box that you could drift around corners real cool. And it was just a joy to drive. And that's what I'd always wind up going back to. I'd, I'd just sell everything else. And I'd sell the apartments. And this this will be a little controversial. But I lived up in Grapeseed. I don't know if you know where Grapeseed is on the GTA 5 map. It's the, it's the shitty little dingy ass town right above the lake. And I'd return to that past lifestyle that I had prior to going on that shopping spree. And I always wondered why. But I was 13 years old, and I had no fucking clue. 
And it was many, many, many years down the road uh, until I really had an answer. I was just coming out of college. I just dropped out. I was making great, great money doing YouTube and Twitch. And this was basically my, <laughs> this was basically my infinite shark card money glitch in GTA. I mean, compared to where I was a couple months prior, uh, doing IT at a call center, being a broke college kid, it was night and day. And just like in GTA 5, I would go through these cycles, I want to call them, of feeling like I needed to do everything and buy everything and, and have everything, and then realizing, oh, you know, it's I can kind of chill, you know? Maybe it's not actually all that important. And so when I just dropped out of college, for me, that was buying a lot of nice clothes, a lot of designer clothes, you know, it, it, that's probably the first thing most people would think about. You know, you want the Gucci, you want the Louis. I bought a lot of Balenciaga shit, which, <clears throat> you know? <laughs> and then after a couple weeks, I'd get bored of it. I'd get bored of it. It wasn't worth it. I'd, I'd go back to the ratty-ass Old Navy sweatpants I was wearing, and that'd be it. And I'd also do this when it came to video making, where I would buy a bunch of cool gear. I would buy a bunch of, uh, a bunch of like, props and stuff that I thought I was going to use in videos. And then I realized, eh, you know, I, I, I probably don't need to be doing this. And after some time, I kind of realized that it transcends just spending money on useless shit. It manifests itself in my work, in my interests, my hobbies. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm somewhat into airsoft. And I have built and modified these guns before. And I've put so much time working on, on one M4 model that I had, right? Putting a new, new trigger on it, a new, uh, you know, electric system and all that shit. And then I kind of want to build another gun without even having used that one and I'm like what why can't I why why can't I just sit still and be happy I feel like I need to be doing everything at the same time and I I can't and it just leaves me stressed and unsatisfied in kind of every avenue because that little voice in the back of my head is saying you can do better here and you should do better here and it's tough to enjoy shit <laughs> Look at that fucking idiot. Oh, God, the people on Spotify have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. That was the funniest shit ever. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, look, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I feel like that's just kind of how I am. I don't think that urge, that itch is ever going to really go away. Uh, you know, there's always something I feel like I need to work on. And if there isn't, I will go out and I will make sure there is one. There's something new I need to worry about, some new obligation I throw on myself. And... Oftentimes, those are kind of there to stay. It's just like a, ma it's like the fucking rabbits go home game for Wii that they released back in 2008, where the rabbits just kind of take trash and they stack it on top of each other and then they build it to the moon. You know? No? I just take a back seat and I let all the obligations stack up. Like that's that's what I do. And I only really started taking action with any of this stuff pretty recently. Because that urge, that drive to do more, I don't think necessarily has to be a bad thing. I think over time, it's going to leave you with more experience and honestly probably more success too in whatever you're trying to do. You just have to be able to channel that somewhere useful and then at the same time kind of understand where your limits are. And that includes being able to say no to things. That includes being able to turn the page on old projects and start something new. Or honestly just close the book entirely on something without feeling the need to start something else. And I think most importantly, it includes that the time you do take for yourself isn't as crazy and as overstimulating as your work is. Because I know that when I get in front of my computer, I feel like I need to, you know, I feel like I got a laundry list of 20 different fucking things that I need to do right now and like 20 other ideas that I need to start on. It's like when you're in high school and you got like 12 different assignments due that night and uh, you, you just you just do none of them. You just procrastinate and push all of it off as far as possible. I, I get burnt out very quickly. I have the tendency to get burnt out and especially last year it was, was pretty rough. And back to the notion of taking time for yourself, I would fill the void and I would fill that leisure time I gave myself with the worst shit possible. I would, I would hop on the couch and I'd immediately open TikTok. And it was just constant mush just being thrown at me, just as crazy as my work was. And 
I have an app on my phone now called One Sec. And whenever I open TikTok, it pops up and it gives me a 10 second countdown before I can actually use the app. And I sit there pissed off because the second I open the app, I don't get that instant gratification anymore. And then it tells me how many times I tried to open the app that day. And the first time, I distinctly remember the first day I had this app, I tried to open TikTok 50 fucking times. 50 fucking times. Is that not absurd? Like, you don't realize how much you even go into the fucking thing. And recently, I haven't felt like opening TikTok at all. And it's it's kind of crazy how quickly that switched. Because I used to just... I, the, TikTok was all I did when I wanted to chill out. I'd hop on the couch, I'd open the app, and it, it is crazy to me how much of a difference it's made in how I relax and how I enjoy my time in general just by delaying that dopamine hit of the app by 10 seconds. 10 seconds is all it took. And it made me realize how much time I actually waste with this shit. Because I'd, I'd be on the shitter and I'd open the app and then I'd see the fucking countdown and I'd be like, ah, God, whatever. And then I'd just wipe my ass I'd be up. <laughs> I'd be up. Like that, I just saved myself minutes and minutes there on the shitter, not sh with with no shit currently coming out of my ass anymore. <laughs> like it, it, it is crazy. The the time I have for myself now is slower, and it is more intentional because of just a, a fucking timer. I started watching longer form content again. I'm watching fucking video essays. I'm finding I'm finding new YouTubers that I uh, that I enjoy for like the first time in years. My free time is, is better, it's more enjoyable now, and it's more meaningful. And it's also kind of slowed some of those cycles for me of like, of like heavy spending or feeling the urge to like start something new right now and do it now, now, now. And it's probably because that I don't open up that fucking app and I don't see like the Amazon dropshippers call me a fucking idiot for not, <laughs> for not like selling shit off Alibaba. You know, and those depressing rabbit holes that you fall down late at night that are like, oh, you need to start collecting rainwater. The world is ending. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not exposed to it anymore. And so as a result, I'm, I'm more at peace in my leisure. And because of that, I'm more focused in my work. And while I still run 10 different YouTube channels, which <laughs> is nine more than most other YouTubers I know, that process is getting easier. And I'm taking steps that I really never took before. I'm hiring people, I'm offloading responsibilities, and I'm trying to enjoy my side projects more, like this one. I would really like curate what went into the weekly slaps. It was very much not uh, a stream of consciousness like this recording is, because I'd, I'd, I'd have some kind of standard that I feel like I needed to hit. And so there were a bunch of hurdles that were getting in the way of me just uploading the weekly slap because I would give them to myself and feel like I had to spend extra time getting this done. And then it just wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the time on the on the slap because, hey, I could just, you know, make the main channel video and that'll be a lot more worth it. And so I'm trying to cut back on that. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for me to do more content that I actually enjoy. And that's why this old microphone is here, because I just, I, I'm not going to lie, I like it more. I feel like this is more fitting for like a decade-old Call of Duty commentary channel. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I'm sorry if you prefer me being a little more precise with the words I say instead of rambling a little more on this channel. But I'm kind of feeling like this is the way for me to get these out on a more consistent basis. Now, I'm not going to make any promises either. I mean, th th this, is not, uh, this is not me committing to... 52 episodes for the rest of the year but I feel like it's a step in the right direction and before we go I want to ask you something is the free time you give yourself after work or school or whatever you're working on just as chaotic and disorganized as your work is and if it is is that really free time at all meaning we have these things that are supposed to relax us and, and calm us down and oftentimes they just do the exact opposite do you put down the phone after a, a chill session on the couch and are you feeling calm and at peace or do you feel like you've got 10 new thoughts that are all biting away at you you know but uh yeah something to chew on let me know thank you boys for watching and i will see you all 
Later.